Well, let, let's get this, uh, we'll get it rolling. And, you know, I'm sure people have, if you showed up, you kind of understand what we're doing. The reason I'd asked, Patrick and I were talking about some different lifting and some changes. And I had some issues that I was thinking I needed to get away from just heavy lifting. And, you know, how, there's so many different ways to go about this. And so the reason we asked everybody to come up with a three minute like pitch is just to highlight I'm pretty sure all five of us are going to have varied variations of what to do. It's a really hard, like there's no way to make a template for this. What our goal is then let's see what other athletes are doing. What, what kind of like information we collect from this pool. And then I'll try and get just a streamlined guide of different ways to think about lifting. So we can post this for athletes that are self-coaching who are trying to get in the gym and, you know, you hit a plateau in the gym and a lot of times like, okay, well, what do I do? My program says to like, you know, maybe I reduce weight or maybe I shift the reps that I'm doing, but some, you know, none of the programs really cycle through like plyometrics and, um, you know, really going through adaptation phases if you need. And so there's just, just like cycling training, lifting is a training all on its own. It's a sport of its own. So as cyclists, how do we boil this down? And I was just left the PT and one comment that he made that I loved is I was asking about a lot of different exercises. He says, remember, a lot of times basic is better and we don't want to make it too basic, but if we can make some bullet points and have ways that we can all, you know, figure out where to go next, um, I think it would be really beneficial. I just don't think a lot of people are talking about this. So we, we were going to have our coaches call this morning and talk about it. I'm like, this is a perfect thing to just open up to everybody. If people want to listen in. If people want to chime in, um, that would be great. So uh, Patrick, Alex, Josh, or Craig, who wants to go first? Patrick does. All right, man. The <laughs> I, time. What's that? I said I'm ready, but I'm concerned about my time limit, but I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> so here's the other caveat too. You can't do the micro machines uh, speaking. You got you got three minutes, get out your best bullet points and uh, there will be time after that you, you can add other stuff. So we'll say the timer starts now. Good luck. Okay. So, I mean, really you got to separate the difference between building strength and a hypertrophy style of, of lifting. And strength training is more about motor unit recruitment. That kind of ties into everything we want to do as cyclists. You know, more motor unit recruitment means better cycling economy. And that's what, that's what we want. So especially for beginners, you really, uh, you can make a lot of gains just by getting into the gym that, you know, you'll, you'll get some of these, we'll call that strength, strength gains just by pedaling a bike, just by becoming an athlete. But if you get in the gym, you're going to kind of, fast track a lot of that. So I uh, started lifting when I started strength training. Uh, my brothers had been into it already and they recommended a program called GZ CLP, which is a very progressive basic program. You can look it up uh, online and it basically takes you through from, from weak to strong in a very gradual way that you can continually build on. Um, so that's kind of what I like for uh, uh, strength building. Um, you can never have too perfect a form. Uh, you got to just constantly be revisiting form. Um, activation is key. So, you know, we have building that strength, building your cycling economy and building, uh, building a better ability to activate is, is key for, you know, when you get onto the bike. So that's kind of the other component that I really think is, is valuable in season. So in season, you know, you want to do these maintenance lifts where every four to 10 days, you're probably doing a strength session, but you don't need to be continuing to build. You want to be doing more of a maintenance. So you'd pick like your six rep max or eight rep max of two or three exercises and do that in short spurts and make the session really straightforward, very simple. And, and then you're going to be covered. You're going to maintain that strength. Uh, and then the other element, you know, I have a couple other things I wanted to point out. You have to have flexibility. You have to keep yourself from getting injured and being, be able to address injuries and you have to keep your core strong. So in competition activation, you got kettlebell swings, you got explosive squats, um, more focus on speed and less on fatiguing yourself. Core is simple. Just got to, 
it's again about activation. Um, five minutes a day, that's something Brennan and I used to talk about. And it really, the idea there is just that you're consistently doing this. And you don't have to do endless sets of core. You really want really concise, hard activation style lifts. Um, flexibility, if, if you need to address it, it just depends on what your style of riding is in saddle, out of the saddle, TT person, explosive sprinter, whatever. It's kind of all case dependent. And then, uh, you know, being able to address pains, little aches and pains. Three minutes is up. Good job. Pretty good. That was, that was good. That was good. <laughs> Tried to cover a lot of ground. Yeah, dude, I like that. That was solid. Um, I think Josh said he wanted to go second, so we'll let you start it up, and your timer starts now. Okay, sweet. So <clears throat> I have a blanket statement with core work. I like to do like 20 to 30 minutes every session, so every strength session, and then like some other ones kind of sporadic throughout the week. But going through the agenda here, if we're talking like base October to December, I had two to three times a week. The emphasis uh, in your training is on these sessions, so you have like endurance on the bike, but you're getting the fatigue and the stress through the, the strength training. In this time, consistency is key. Uh, keep progressing your routine, building your routine, whatever that is, building in time in that routine to watch videos, to have your uh, mobility routine. Um, so you know you're, like Patrick said, you know you're doing everything correct. I like to keep like a little YouTube playlist and save all the videos I like so I can go back and watch those. So make videos of myself, make sure I'm doing things correctly. Um, so these sessions are probably a bit longer and maybe you're not doing exactly all strength, but you're doing things correctly. You're setting that base up. So starting off with body weight also in this session and then progressing to the heavy weight, but keeping it slow. If you do too much, like everyone knows you start doing the gym work and you're sore for like two weeks and it's awful. Start off slow, ease into it, go from the body weight to the heavy weight. All right. So that's like the base, uh, getting into the build session. This is like two times a week still with the emphasis still on uh, heavy weight. So now you progress from the body weight to the heavy weight. Again, sticking to the routine, building in, like I missed this in the first part, but doing tertiary lifts. Maybe now you're adding in some different tertiary lifts if the routine is getting a bit stale. That was like 12 weeks you're doing the base phase. Now you're going into something different. If you wanna mix it up, do some new tertiary lifts. Keep the sessions maybe to an hour now. Maybe they were like 90 minutes before. Try to get in and out. You, you have some more stress on the bike. Um, again, keeping like this strong feeling in the gym. I missed that from before, but I like that. You go into the gym, you get like this strong feeling. You walk out and you're like, this was a good lift. Or this was a good session. Continuing that in this build phase. Getting into the racing phase, backing it off now to like one, two times per week. I'm calling this a half maintenance phase. So one heavy lift one like maybe not heavy um maybe you're not doing your your main sets maybe you don't do squats or, or deadlifts you're focusing on the tertiary lifts but you're still getting that second session in to keep that routine um let's see what else switch the focus maybe doing some different lifts too now add in some different tertiary lifts but and i highlighted don't stop now keep going and as you build into your racing like your goals in june july and august now backing it off to like a full maintenance phase so bringing the weight down if you are going just one time a week. So maybe you're doing your main sets, but you're doing less sets, you're doing less weight and you're not necessarily gaining now, but you're not losing what you've, what you've done for the last, you know, six, seven, eight months. Great job, um, dude. And again, yeah, and that's it. Buzzer three minutes. <laughs> Great work, man. Um, I know Alex is dying to go. He said he's a little nervous. So Alex, you are <laughs> up three minutes starts now. Uh, I'm a good example how to not do things because I ignored weight training completely until uh, I got injured a few times. So uh, afterwards, the therapist and my previous coach recommended, yeah, maybe you should go to the gym. It will, prob it will probably help you. So I had like, uh, my body was like, like imbalanced completely. My core was weak. And the first thing I noticed like when I hit, when I hit the gym, was, oh, I can actually climb now. Like my body is more stable on the bike. I can push more power when going above 10%. So the next two winters, I lifted heavy, uh, starting in November and going through February. And then like when I progressed into racing season, just because I move around a lot. So I'm usually based in uh, Belgium. 
I didn't speak the language there, so I just resorted to yoga and core training because it was the easiest and the most access accessible for me. So that's kind of the routine I was taking, like uh, two to three times a week in the winter, heavy lifting and um, yoga two two times a week in the se in the season. Uh, but also, I have to add, well, like strength training will uh, help an individual obtain optimal uh, body composition. Uh, you, you can improve easily your peak powers. I've seen like for myself, big gains in my sprint power because uh, from the winter I started doing, uh, doing strength training, I would hit thousand watts easily and that was unachievable before, beforehand. So uh, strength training as of like two years ago has become pretty important to myself and yeah, I'm a bit nervous so I don't, I don't really know what, what to say so we're capping it, capping it off here. Dude, that's awesome. It's a great place to, to cut it. Um, I won't be a jerk and let myself go last. Craig, I'll let you go last. So I'm going to go now. My timer starts at 25.50 to 28.50. All right, someone say something at 28.50. Okay, so I broke mine down, and I'm going to come from the standpoint of I just had an issue where when I went from three times a week with GZCLP, you can Google that if you're not familiar with it, to two times a week. All of a sudden, even though I tell people don't let the tertiary lift slip, I was making gains in the gym that I was like, I just got to lift heavy. And I started lifting too much, just heavy. And I think I started to let some tertiary things fall. So what I'm going to recommend to people is let's call it like October, November, December, you're in there doing big weight, heavy stuff twice a week. And your third day of lifting is more what we had called the home workouts when COVID came. And so you're focusing on band work, you're focusing on like glute bridges, really isolating those smaller muscles that even though I was talking to my PT about it, even though they're part of a bigger lift, when you go and lift big, your big muscle groups take over. And so it's kind of like the person in the, he used the analogy, it's the person in the group who's always just like, oh, just let me do it. So if you do a glute bridge and your hamstring locks up, it's not that you have a weak hamstring. He said that it's your hamstring just like, let me do the work. So I want to focus on those little isolated muscles that definitely make you feel fuller on the bike. And so it goes along with that, you know, muscle activation and making sure everything's firing. I could never conceptualize this in, until I realized my glutes really weren't firing. I had no way of testing or addressing this. Then we're in January and February, depending on when this person starts racing, let's say it's March, as long as if we go down two roads, like are they trying to do every race at 95% so they can get upgrade points or are they focusing on one big race later in the year? I'm gonna go in my case, focusing on one big race, still go into the gym twice a week, but lift heavy every other week and then have your two lifts like on the non-heavy week be one of those focused home workout, uh, like, you know, bands, lighter weight, and then have your other lift be more quote unquote maintenance where you might be lifting 85%. And instead of doing three reps, you might be doing six reps. The only caveat is if it makes you super, super tired and sore, then you probably got to change that up. And then into racing, same thing, heavy, like once every 10 days, and then really focusing on those isolated small muscle groups so that you stay injury free. And I think that's my time. So Damn, that was tough. All right, Craig, you are up starting now. Um, yeah, I kind of look at the, from the 30,000 foot uh, view and kind of uh, look at things in inverse. You know, we're, we're all time crunched with, uh, with our training. And when it comes to, you know, once the weather gets, gets uh, better and you're, and you're getting out and, and you're really focused on getting out on the bike and riding and, and lifting can, can go by the wayside. I mean, one of the, one of the questions I, I get most frequently is I can only ride eight to 10 hours a week. Where can I fit in um, my strength training? And you don't get that question as much in the, in the base phase or, you know, in the winter um, as you do, you know, when the weather's good and guys want to get out and ride their bike um, as often as possible. So if you have a base build 
race, um, season on the bike, um, looking at your strength training in the gym in inverse of that, like the, the, the base, when you're base on the bike, you should be lifting heavy, um, in the gym, you should be building your strength. And that's not, um, exclusive of what, uh, you were talking about, Brendan, you still need to adjust all your, your tertiary muscles in order to, to lift heavy. Um, but you have more time. You don't feel as much urgency of, Oh, I got to get out on the bike. I got to get out on the bike. So take that time to build your strength because once, you know, endurance athletes, once you're in season, you can't build strength. Your, your best bet is to be able to maintain it. And so, you know, you mentioned one, one, uh, one lift every, every 10 days, one heavy lift every 10 days during the, the race season, you know, you could do once a week, um, if you want to lift more frequently, but you're just maintaining, um, in, in the race season. Um, and so in between base and race, you kind of have this, this build period where, you know, you could introduce plyos, um, speed work, um, and, um, you know, for, for me personally, I probably tried to lift heavy too long into that, into that build, um, part of the calendar, um, probably could have back, backed off and, and worked, worked in some, some more plyos, uh, speed work. So that, that's kind of the way I look at things. It's an inverse of what you would do on the bike. You're, you're building muscle in the winter. Um, you're transitioning to some speed in the early race season, and then you're maintaining uh, once the race season's here. And then, you know, we've, we've done, a, we've done a podcast before on the force number, you know, for me, that helps keep my eye on the ball, regardless of what the exact lift is, or you, you change out a lift, or you switch things, you're always trying to maintain or build that force number, whether it's with squat or deadlift. We're also data driven. It's, it's important to keep an eye. Uh, on. That. Good job, so, Craig. That was <laughs> awesome. There were a couple threads that stuck out that I'd, I'd I want to bring up. Um, and it's funny, I totally didn't even mention Plyo in mine. Uh, some people that were listening in, if you want to unmute your mic, I'd love to hear if you have a lifting protocol, if you can like chime in what you're doing. I know I see Yames out there, Sam. Um, we'd love to hear what you find to be useful. And then maybe after that, we could have, uh, you know, what threads really stuck out? Like what were the five of us talking about maybe that had similarities and that had differences? So who, would, who wouldn't mind just sharing some experience? Uh, this, this, this is Mr. Dad, my, my kids actually changed my, uh, my phone name. So my, my name's actually Corey. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly new sort of all the way around. I've done some, you know, uh, gym work before, but it wasn't necessarily specific to say cycling. Um, and I think all of, all of what you all had to say resonated in, in some fashion or another. Um, I would say as somebody that's pretty new to, to training on the bike in general, adding in the, the weightlifting, I'm, I'm 42. So it seems like it's a pretty pertinent thing to, to, to be getting in the gym. Um, a, a huge thing that I've noticed is, is just like muscle activation in areas that I didn't realize was supposed to be part of the pedal stroke. Like, like the glutes, uh, was a really, like a really big one actually for me. Um, and I just recently, I think through doing some heavy squats and, and, uh, you know, like some band exercises and things like that, um, that glute activation, uh, I think has made it. So during my pedal stroke, uh, I can actually sort of switch on and off, like say my glute versus my quad and kind of uh, turn sort of uh, instinctively kind of turn those on and off. Uh, whereas before I didn't ever sort of felt the glute activation before. Um, I think to Alex's point too, I've, I've noticed this, some uh, increase in like a peak sprint power. Um, I feel I've, I've got sort of a naggly knee issue that if I keep with my uh, stretching and, and, uh, sort of the maintenance phase of, that I'm at with the, uh, the, the weightlifting that uh, that seems to keep that at bay as well. Um, so I've definitely seen the, some benefits there. Uh, one, one question I kind of had is, uh, so I'm kind of using the, what is it, the cycling uh, training uh, Bible, the, the, the Joe Farrell, uh, he's got sort of a, a base build sort of maintenance phase and I'm kind of sort of doing his maintenance phase where it's like the one, maybe two a week uh, type type maintenance um 
and oddly, maybe it's the newbie thing, but I'm, I'm still sort of making, um, you know, s small gains. So instead of doing like, say, adding an extra set, I'm actually just sort of increasing the weight a little bit each time. I don't know if that's maybe, a, maybe I should be doing that a little differently. Um, anyway, that, that's sort of my input from a, from a newer cyclist standpoint. Dude, that was awesome. What does anybody, anybody, can anyone answer his question or comment on that? That's familiar with the Frio program of the maintenance or. With, with regard to the, uh, whether to add weight or, or do reps or increase reps, you know, I, I would take the same approach you would, um, on the bike, you know, you're always trying to, to make progression and whether that's, you know, on the bike, we think of one more interval or we think of a little more Watts or we think of a little less recovery the same philosophy um, could apply in the gym. Um, you know, one, one more rep um, or, you know, going, going up 5% in weight. Um, you know, if, if you're doing speed work, you can, you can reduce your recovery uh, time between sets too. So um, all those, those same uh, philosophies that apply on the bike also transition to the weight room. Hey guys, it's Jennifer. <laughs> I think I'm the, uh, the lone female here in this group. Am I not? You might be way to yeah. represent. I know, right? But listen, I've got a lot of things to say about this. So, Good. so what I'm hearing, you know, the um, some of the similar threads from what all you guys are saying is obviously continue into race season, which uh, this will be the first time that I've continued. Um, well, I haven't raced that much, so let's just put that caveat out there. But in terms of just continuing while I'm racing, whether that was triathlon or now, you know, road, um, I think that's going to be um, interesting. I did have a little bit of a a mental hang up in terms of letting that second lifting session go during the week. Um, Brennan and you guys, I think Brennan's my coach. So I like the way he said that, um, you know, just kind of keep the band work going maybe for the second session and stuff like that. Um, I did notice two weeks ago when I went on vacation, I didn't do anything like lifting wise while I was on vacation. And when I came back to do a four hour endurance ride that weekend, so it was just one week of not lifting, I noticed that my hamstrings were starting to cramp. I had a little jiggle in my calf muscle. That was like one week of not doing this stuff. And then I went back to it last week and that stuff wasn't there. So, um, I mean, I do think for myself, that's extremely important to keep that going. And then also as a female, I mean, I'm 45 right now. So I think as a female, as I age, um, of course, it's very important to keep that strength up. But, um, I also noticed that it's very important for me to keep my, my upper body and my core very strong because, I probably feel that more than anything activating, especially when I'm going um, hard and when I'm racing, um, even like my arms, like if I don't, if I don't maintain my strength in my arms, I feel like they're weak when I really go to do some um, really stronger efforts. So for me as a female, it's really important to keep my upper body um, strong. And I know that probably goes, flies in the face of a lot of, um, you know, professional cyclists where they don't want to carry any extra weight in their upper body. But I, I like just don't want to do that because a, I want to stay strong as I age and then B, um, just, you know, stay injury proof and really having the ability to get up and out of the saddle with my arms. So I'll stop there. So I want to chime in on that one because you made a great point that I was talking to Patrick about this. When we go and we shift from whether it's three times a week to two times a week or two times a week to one time a week, it, we do have to mentally let go of that and be like, okay, because the gym can get enjoyable and it's fun to see the games happening and then I was like I, I feel like I should be going twice a week and he was like dude remember this is supporting the bike like you're not a power lifter it's it's okay so having that mental perspective of it and changing things up and I kind of went through a similar thing of being like so am I really going to do a day of like band work and then I had an issue with my QL this this inner ab uh, muscle that was just you know, it's coming from my glute medius. Long story short, I was missing all the little things and only focusing on the big things. And that was definitely a mistake. So thank you for those comments. That was really good. Who else can share some experience out there? Yeah, when, when you do a, a strength day, uh, on the same day when you go riding, yeah, it's um, on an intensive day, intensive uh, ride or uh, endurance ride. And I'm a little bit... Um, for what's the best uh, so yeah so can i pop in on this one yeah please do 
cool. So I am, uh, I'm currently working, so I may need to pop out, but um, just wanted to touch on a couple of things that people have mentioned um, and add to them a little bit. Uh, to answer directly that question, uh, Brendan, I had shared a couple of these resources with you, um, some peer reviewed studies that people ran through uh, concurrent strength training with rides um, over, you know, like uh, some of them were like six to 10 week studies. Um, but most of them found and kind of agreed that um, the timing of your lift session and the type of riding that you're doing does make a difference um, in your bike performance over that time period. So what I typically do is if I'm, I, I tend to pair my lift sessions with low intensity endurance days. Um, you can do them. It's most flexible that way. You can do them. Um, lift after the endurance ride, or they found that separating them by at least eight hours would also basically not muddle the adaptive signals that you get from both the endurance ride and also the weight session. If you're going to lift on days that you are also doing bike intensity, it's very important to leave that eight hour minimum separation. And these are all, I'm just kind of parroting <laughs> the results of these studies. Um, but they did find that <clears throat> if you did a high intensity uh, bike session and then went and lifted heavy pretty much immediately afterwards um, because of the different types of muscular activations there, you wouldn't really reap the benefits of the high intensity interval session or the, the you know, neuromuscular benefit from lifting heavy. Um, so that's, that's sort of my take on, on pairing lifting with, uh, with training. Um, I also find personally that I have the easiest time maintaining and not, not disrupting the flow of my, of my training week when I pair lifting sessions on the days that I have endurance rides, because I don't have to care about the timing so much. If I have time to go ride and then lift, um, that's good. Sometimes I'll split it. I'll lift, I'll ride in the morning before work and I'll lift afterwards. Um, I've also had success with that. Um, and to, uh, to kind of shift the back to a question that was that was posed earlier um the type of lifting you know as you're as you're getting into racing um how it shifts from from build i know that joe friel uh i haven't read his most recent iteration of the cyclist training bible but i know that he's changed it a lot he may have preserved this aspect of it but he draws a lot of attention to um the different gains that you can get from lifting high weight, low reps, low weight, high reps, you know, how that reflects on muscular endurance, like strength endurance, being able to push high Watts for a long period of time. And that would be sort of your, your lower weight, high rep, um, versus, you know, your max, your peak power, um, which you, you get from heavy weights. And also there's that, there's that dynamic aspect of it too. So some, something in between, like if you were doing a build cycle and you built up a lot of weight over that time, um, as you're transitioning to specialty phase and getting into racing, and you really want to sharpen that, you might drop the weight down and focus more on the speed of your lifts, you know, doing more dynamic exercises. I always um, think and I've, that. Yeah, exactly. Um, so really there's like, uh, that, that dynamic aspect of it, I think is the, is the final key that really hasn't been touched on yet. You know, we, we build heavy weight throughout the build cycle, maybe in the build phase or the base phase. And then, um, as you get into your, your sharper stuff, you know, you can just drop the weight and focus more on doing those skills and, um, sprint work on the bike. But I think that there's, there's definitely reason to believe that we can pair it with, um, you know, dropping weight and not just doing a maintenance session, but actually shifting the focus of the weight session to more dynamic, um, you know, maybe you lift a couple, couple uh, heavy reps and then do a series of box jumps or something like that to really prime neuromuscularly for a, for a sprint. Um, and that's actually one of the things that I'm really experimenting with uh, this season. This is the first season that I've lifted uh, heavy throughout the winter and I'm fully committing to doing it year round. You know, Brendan, you've been a big, um, a big influence on me in that way. So I'm going to see how it works. I did just go out and do, um, I big, I did a big test ride yesterday 
um, and set a new uh, five second uh, lifetime power record. Um, you know, and I haven't even done any sprint work. So I've just kind of been transitioning to the heavy stuff and it seems to be, it seems to be working really well for me. So I think it's, it's very promising and, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be quiet now. <laughs> I appreciate you guys listening to me. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. That, that was a uh, really good information. I, I believe, yeah, I, I, it's been a while since I've read through it and it actually your points remind me of, uh, of some of those points that uh, I, I've neglected to forget, which is, yeah, that transition to sort of, I don't know, I don't know if you would call it like plyo work, but yeah, like you said, like dynamic, um, you know, taking the heavy weight, reducing it. So that would be curious to see. Um, are you noticing a, like a lot more fatigue with that style work um, and pairing it with endurance versus, um, uh, you know, uh, high intensity work uh, with, with your sort of self experiment? Um, I am, I, I, ha, I don't have the, the longevity, uh, of the data yet to really confirm that. Um, I've definitely cut my sessions, my intent sessions down to one per week. And I am still, I'm still keeping it heavy and dynamic, mostly on deadlift days. I've really cut my squats down a whole lot because I find that those are the ones that if I do lift heavy or do an intense session with my squats, I find that it leaves me more sore longer. Um, so, so far I haven't, I haven't noticed a whole, uh, you know, uh, an abundance of chronic fatigue. Um, but you know, time will tell. And, um, yeah, I guess one more thing too, uh, while we're talking about fatigue. Hey guys, thanks for checking out part one of the evoke strength conversation. We'll be back with part two very soon. Have a great day. Good luck with your training.